If you're planning to start an online business or you're currently a business owner, you definitely want to watch this video to the end because in this video, I'll be sharing with you things I wish I had known before starting an online business and the things I learned along the way. You know the drill. Like this video so it can reach a wider audience. Subscribe to the channel because if you're not at this point, what are you doing fam? What are you doing? Now you've liked the video and you've subscribed, let's do this. I started my business in November 2022. I had a goal to launch my business before my birthday, 28. So these are the things I wish I had known and the things I have learned in the process. Number one, you don't need a website. Many aspiring entrepreneurs believe that having a fancy website is a prerequisite for launching an online business i was one of them this was me trying to design my website myself because i was broke <laughs> i did by the way i did design my website myself but at the expense of the time i would have invested in doing other things the emotional mental stress i was not sleeping i know i find it hard to sleep normally but this was extreme some days i'll be so frustrated with my lack of sleep my slow laptop all of these would have been avoided if i knew better while a website can certainly enhance your online presence it's not essential in the early stage focus on building your brand and a strong presence through social media platforms like instagram facebook tiktok take a peek anyone you're comfortable using anyone you're familiar with as your business grows you can invest in a website but right now if you're just starting out or if it's the reason you've not started my friend you don't have a reason not to launch your online business you can even create a mini website using canva watch this video on how you can do that if i knew this before i started my online business i would have saved myself from a lot of stress so don't let having a website hold you back from starting the truth is 40 percent of my client base are from instagram 60 percent referrals i don't think i got any clients from the website i created as a matter of fact for now i am pressing posts on anything concerning website for my online business for now so use your socials to launch your online business promote your brand and make sure you're delivering quality service or products number two is quality over quantity one of the most common mistakes new business owners make is undervaluing their services or products in the bid to attract more clients or customers however slashing your price will often lead to a vicious circle of diminishing returns instead prioritize quality over quantity when i started my online business my fees were not fair to me they were not fair at all and i was so overwhelmed with work and getting lead to returns i had so many clients and i was always working i was always busy but the money i was seeing was not equivalent to the amount of people i was working with and the effort i was imputing in the work now i prioritize quality over quantity the quality of clients in this sense even if i'm working with 10 clients in a month that's fine it's okay this also gives me time to create content creating content on youtube is a lot of work and i was doing all of that that time and creating content the same time and have you subscribed to this channel yet <laughs> kindly hit the subscribe button if you're yet to subscribe to this channel and if you're finding value in this video so far, give this video a thumbs up so it can reach a wider audience. And if you're an online business owner, let me know in the comment section the services you offer or the products you're selling. Sell yourself in the comment section. I don't mind. Comment the name of your business in the comment section, the service you provide or the products you sell. And if you're about to start an online business, let me know in the comment section the hurdles you're facing or if you have any questions at all, drop them in the comment section and I will definitely get back to you. So back to quality over quantity. Set a standard price 
that reflects the value you provide. And don't compromise on it. Don't. By attracting quality clients who appreciate the value you offer, you'll build a sustainable business in the long run. Number three is more of a lesson. Beware of client guilt trip. The I will bring somebody mantra. It's not uncommon for clients to negotiate discounts by promising to bring in more business in the future. While it may be tempting for you to give in to their demands, remember that discounting your price sets a dangerous precedent. As a matter of fact, I didn't even know this before. This is also something I wish I knew in the beginning. I will bring somebody. I used to fall for this, but not anymore. I had a client last week who was referred by somebody I had worked with. He told me, give me a discount. I'll bring some of my guys. After the long chat, I told him, Mr. A did not refer you because we gave him a discount. He referred you because of the value we provided to him. And he knows that you will benefit from the same value. And guess what? He laughed and said, I'm sending the money now. So the I will bring somebody mantra is totally normal, but politely and firmly refuse to succumb to their guilt trips and stand firm on your pricing. Your time and expertise are valuable and you deserve to be compensated fairly for them. Others are charging less. This is another common phrase that clients will come to you with. Others are charging less. So why are you here? Now, the truth is you can't compete on price alone. In a competitive market, it's easy to feel pressure to match or undercut the prices of your competitors. Competing solely on price is a race to the bottom that undermines the value you provide. Instead of lowering your prices to match that of the competition, emphasize the unique value proposition that sets you apart. Last month, I had a client I worked with I had revamped his CV. He had seen the value we provide. He said he wanted to optimize his LinkedIn profile as well. I shared our packages with him. He was off for a few days. When he came back, he said, I have seen people offering as low as he mentioned the price. I shared the value he's going to get if he decides to proceed with us. Still, he was emphasizing on this other person's fee he saw online. And I was like, okay, it's fine. And guess what? He went off for 24 hours and when he came back he sent a proof of payment and i was like okay zitari won then instead of engaging in price wars focus on communicating the value proposition of your offerings and why they justify their price point customers are often willing to pay more for quality expertise and exceptional service number five it's okay to have slow months here's the thing as an entrepreneur not every month will be a home run this is something i wish someone had told me there are months you will ask yourself did i make the right decision if i'm being honest last year there were months i would be like it's it's as if that nine to five i said i don't want to do i'll do it now i will apply for jobs really and get a call for interview by the way before i started my business i think i've shared that story in this video or in this video I would apply for jobs and then they would tell me you have to be 25 you have to be of a certain age maybe i started my online business and decided that i'm not doing it again i started getting offers so last year there were months i would apply for jobs and when i get a call back <laughs> i will not show up i'll reply and tell them i can't make it i'll just change my mind and be like i don't want to do this when i consider what they were offering and the things I am doing, me trying to build my business, trying to build my YouTube channel. I see that if I take on this offer, I won't be able to do any of these things. And the pay will not compensate for letting my online business go, letting my YouTube channel go. So I'll just tell them I'm not doing it again. <laughs> when I have this feeling, I go back to my drawing board and have serious conversations with myself because you're supposed to be doing more and look for ways i can create more streams of income sometimes business is slow that's perfectly normal don't sweat it bonus lesson invest in education continuous learning is key to staying relevant and competitive in any business learn about your craft 
how you can improve and give more value to your clients or to your customers. There are things I know now but didn't when I started my business or I had to learn them in the process. So invest in yourself, self-educate, expand your skill set and refine your business strategies. When Zitari started, we were just all about writing resumes, cover letters, optimizing LinkedIn profiles, mock interviews, but now we write business proposals, business plans. So expand your skill set and your business strategies. Watch this video next on side hustle ideas you can do online. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you there.